Do you enjoy using Blender for your projects, but find rendering times to be a bit headache? No matter what you try, it feels like a never-ending struggle? Well, this video is for you. I've been working in CG projects with Blender for some time now, and I have to say, I'm loving it. Blender offers an awesome structure and workflow, tons of cool features, and you can pretty much bring all your ideas to life. But here's the catch. Rendering times can be a real pain, especially for those realistic ones, whether you are using EV or Cycles. So I decided to give Unreal Engine 5.3 a try. And let me tell you, it's mind-blowing how fast it renders while maintaining high quality almost on par with Cycles. We don't need to talk about EV anymore, it's basically left in the dust and Unreal got it all speed and quality. But before you jump into Unreal with your Blender project, there are a few things you should know. Let's dive into it so you can start right now without wasting your time. Open up your Blender project because it's time to make some tweaks. First, forgot about exporting procedural materials or nodes, except texture nodes. You will need to bake your procedural materials into textures or simply use PBR textures, for example. If you've only adjusted texture properties with nodes, contrast, roughness or whatever, there's no need to bake them. You can fix this in Unreal easily. Check your UV maps and unwrap your meshes if you haven't already. And don't forget to bake your animations into keyframes. Make sure to apply the scale and modifiers for all your objects. Non-mesh elements like lamps and cameras or curves might not transfer correctly, so you have to convert as much as possible to meshes. There's a way to export the full camera animation to Unreal, but it involves a lot of settings and it can get messy easily. I recommend setting up your camera in Unreal from scratch. It's as straightforward as in Blender. And if you have a smooth workflow to avoid this issue, please share it in the comments below. Now let's export the project as an FBX file. Select the object types you have and check Bake Animation if you have got animation keyframes. Now we can switch over to Unreal Engine 5. When you first open Unreal, you will see your project browser. I would recommend selecting the film and video section with a blank scene and don't forget to enable ray tracing. Once your project is open, the first thing you want to do is tweak some project settings. So search for renewing and make sure the reflection mode is set to lumen, hardware ray tracing is checked when available and set ray lighting mode to hit lighting for reflection if your GPU can handle it. Enable high quality translucency reflections and virtual shadow maps. Also support hardware ray tracing, ray traced shadows and path tracing. Finally, search for DirectX and make sure you are using DirectX 12. These are the most crucial project settings and now we just need to enable some plugins. You will need the Movie Render Queue plugin for more control and better animation quality and also check if HDR backdrop is enabled. The same goes for the level sequence editor. If you opened a different template, it might not be enabled, so better safe than sorry. Now your engine needs to restart. After that, we can import our Blender project. Just drag and drop the FBX file into your content browser, leave everything as default. You can check build Nanite, but I personally don't recommend it, as it can sometimes cause weird shadow issues. And this can be fixed, but in my case, I don't need it. Now, you have everything including texture maps. If not, you can easily drag and drop them later. Switch to Unlit to view everything without shadows. It makes the next steps much easier. Take your time to organize your materials into separate folders to keep things tidy and start adding textures to the materials. With Control and Space, you can open the content browser again and you can also dock this to your layout. And just drag and drop the texture maps into the material graph, just like in Blender. You will probably notice that glass and emissive materials behave differently compared to Blender. And if you set up mirrors like me, they might look strange. And maybe you are dealing with odd mesh visibilities. Let's fix all of that. For materials that have visibility issues, check the two-sided option. By default, Unreal renders only one side of a material, and if your Blender Mesh has flipped normals, it can lead to this problem. For glass material, set 
the blend mode to translucent, lighting mode to surface translucent volume, and refraction mode to index of refraction. If your glass is just a plane, you are all set. But if it has some thickness, like mine, check two-sided. Set the color to black and plug it into metallic. Create four simple constant notes while pressing one and clicking with your left mouse button. Connect the first one into the roughness with the very low value for clear glass and the higher one for frosted glass. And the second one to opacity with something between 0.3 and 0.5. Create a lerp node and add a fresnel node. Then plug the constant node into A and B. The first one set to 1 and the second one to the index of refraction you need. Plug the Fresnel output into alpha and the lerp output into the refraction slot. You might notice that the material still casts 100% shadows. To fix this, enable shadow indirect only for all your glass materials. Moving on to mirrors. After setting up the material, select your post process volume and under lumen reflection, change ray lighting mode to hit lighting for reflection and enable high quality translucency reflections to get that mirror white. Now let's tackle emissive materials. They are pretty straightforward to set up, but you might notice some issues and yet we still need these materials. Select your color and plug it into a multiply node, then connect that to the emissive color. Increase the second value to something like 100 or as needed. Save it and switch to lit if you haven't already. But you see, pure emissive light, even if you render it, there's still some flickering. But we need it later, so leave it as is for now. The best lighting can be achieved by adding lights to your light sources. For ceiling lights, I use spotlights and for my stair lights, I opt for rectangle lights. Try to match the shape of your original light source and place them where the original lights were. Your lighting setup is almost complete. If you need a sky and a sunlight, here's a quick way to add it. Just add an HDRI backdrop. If you want to change it to a custom one, make sure you have an HDR file. EXR won't work. Drag your custom HDRI into the folder. After this, you can simply drag and drop it to make the change. If your reflection doesn't match with the HDRI backdrop, select your skylight, change the source type to cube map and drag your HDRI into it. The skylight is now set. For sunlight, it's essentially the directional light. Align its rotation to match your HDRI and you are good to go. If you want to add light or god rays, you will need the exponential height fork and enable volumetric fork. With the scattering distribution, you can adjust the fork visibility based on your camera perspective. To intensify the god ray effect, increase the volumetric scattering intensity of your directional light. You might encounter the error message lighting needs to be rebuilt. Or if not, you will probably run into it. This means the lighting calculations aren't accurate anymore, at least in some places. To fix it, click build and select build lighting only. It will take a few seconds or maybe one or two minutes depending on your scene. And another common error message you might see is texture streaming pool over duh, 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 budget. Type the following in the command line r.streaming.pool size space and a number for example 3000 to get rid of this issue. But this depends on your hardware. There's a way to change this permanently, but I prefer to have control over it every time I open Unreal. Lastly, let's look at the post process volume to get access to bloom, lens flare, depth of field, color correction, and more. We can also turn off auto exposure if you want to. Under exposure, set the min and max value to the same, for instance 0.25, depending on your desired exposure. Start by selecting bloom and increasing the intensity slightly. Adjust the threshold to affect only the light and not the environment. This is also why creating an emissive material is crucial. Enable lens flare and depth of field. Also consider motion blur for animations. Under global, enable contrast to achieve a similar effect to Blender's contrast presets. There's so much more you can do in Unreal, from lens distortion, camera shake, a bunch of filters and other options. It's just too much to cover in this video. Remember to add the level sequence to your scene if you are rendering an animation and drag your created Cine camera actor into it. 
position the camera, create keyframes by clicking the dot like you are used in Blender. Set another point on the timeline, move the camera and create another keyframe. Now open the render queue and there you can add and tweak your render settings like resolution, frame rate, anti-lasing, console variables, file format, output directory and more. Just play around and if you are done, save your settings to a preset and hit render. And that's pretty much it. If I missed something or you encounter issues, let me know and I will do my best to help you. For my testing so far, Unreal Engine 5 is definitely worth considering for rendering your projects, especially for animations. For still images, it might not pay off unless you prefer Unreal's look over Blender's, but for animations, it's a game changer. My three backroom projects were rendered with Cycles, Eevee and Unreal Engine 5.3. The first one I had to render with cycles with an average frame render time of about 20 seconds. The quality is visibly lower and it still took 5 days to render all 12,000 frames. The second one rendered with EV had an average frame render time of 6 seconds along with 1 or 2 hours light and reflection baking. The entire animation was done in a single day and a few hours. And the third one, when at an Unreal Engine, had less than one second per frame and the whole animation was completed in two hours with additional three hours spent figuring out how to set up my Blender project in Unreal and resolving all the issues I've covered in this video. It's amazing how quickly Unreal delivers while maintaining quality comparable to Cycles. Moreover, it offers built-in features that enhance your final render, features you might need several add-ons or other software for in Blender. Don't get me wrong, Blender is still fantastic and has its strength, but to maximize quality and performance, combining the power of both software is the way to go. I mean, why you should wait days or even weeks if you can get the equivalent result in a few hours. Have you had experience with Blender and Unreal? Share your thoughts and experience in the comments below so we can all learn and grow together. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.